So, good morning and welcome back to NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis. Um, we have been discussing about total synthesis of various alkaloids. So, we have been talking about total synthesis of uh, alkaloids and in the last lecture we talked about the total synthesis of uh, reserpine and today we will talk about uh, synthesis of yohembine which has close similarity with reserpine. So, if you look at uh, the structure of yohembine and it has the same core structure of reserpine, but it has uh, uh, acyl group here. So, with uh, uh, trimethoxy aryl group attached to the carbonyl and you also have a OME group in reserpine. So, this natural product was isolated way back in 1880 and it was a major alkaloid um, isolated from chlorine and the yohembe. Okay. And this correct structure was reported by Witkop in 1943. You can see it took about 63 years to assign the correct structure of uh, Yohembai. And it took another few years to complete the first total synthesis which was report reported by Van Tamilen in 1958. And the key reactions involved in the total synthesis of Yohembai was Diels-Hall reaction. So, that Diels-Hall reaction was used to construct the E ring and followed by the hydroxylation, cleavage and cyclization uh, which is almost like Woodward's total synthesis of reserpine. Okay. So, now let us see how Van Tamilen approached the total synthesis of Tamilen and let us see his retrosynthetic approach. So, he thought first he can cyclize this amide and this carbonyl group followed by cyclization at this carbon. Okay. He tries to form the C D ring using these three functional groups. Then if you look at this dialdehyde, okay, this dialdehyde, the dialdehyde can be obtained by cleaving this cyclohexene. If you do your ozonolysis or if you do dihydroxylation followed by cleavage, you can get this dialdehyde. And once you see this cyclohexene, okay, wherever you see as cyclohexene, one reaction which should come to your mind immediately is Diels-Hall reaction. So, that is what uh, he proposed, a yeah. intermolecular Diels-Hall reaction between butadiene and benzoquinone, para benzoquinone as the key step and that is the first step in the total synthesis reported by Van Tamile. Now, let us see how he did or how he accomplished the total synthesis of Johampine uh, starting from butadiene. Okay, so, first step as he proposed in the retrosynthesis was the Diels-Hall reaction between butadiene and para benzoquinone. Okay, so, in benzene when you reflex you get this bicyclic compound. <coughs> now, one can selectively reduce the ene diol, the double bond of the ene diol by treating with zinc and acetic acid without touching the isolated double bond. So, this double bond is in conjugation with two carbonyl group which can be easily reduced selectively by treating with zinc and acetic acid. Now, this is symmetrical diketone. Okay, so, next is carrying out a Darzen's reactions. You know, Darzen's reaction is to homologate. So, here the homologation was done with alpha chloroethyl acetate. You generate an anion here that attacks the carbonyl group, and this O minus comes and expels the chloride to form the epoxide. Okay, that is the first step in Darzen's reaction. So, now simple hydrolysis will give the carboxylic acid because it has to undergo decarboxylation followed by opening of the epoxy to get the corresponding aldehyde. Okay. So, the hydrolysis, the saponification was done with the aqueous sodium hydroxide and followed by opening and protection of the resultant aldehyde. Okay. It is a homologation to get the aldehyde. And the protection with diethylene glycol. Okay. So, this was done in the presence of uh, um, the diethylene glycol 
to get the corresponding aldehyde. So, homologation was done from carbonyl group to CH to CHO. Now, the aldehyde was easily oxidized uh, at room temperature with silver oxide to get the corresponding carboxylic acid and that carboxylic acid was converted into corresponding acid chloride followed by treatment with tryptamine. Okay. So, it forms basically the corresponding amide. Okay. Once you see this, now the next step is to cleave this double bond. Okay. Once you cleave this double bond, you get a dialdehyde. So, this was done in two step protocol. First, you carry out the dihydroxylation to get the diol and then you reduce this ketone. Okay. You reduce this ketone under hydrogenation condition. Okay, that is little bit tricky. So, you can see that normally what one would use sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride, but you also have the amide if you use LH that can reduce the amide, but they have used a simple hydrogenation condition to reduce the ketone to get the corresponding triol. Okay, so, you have 1, 2, 3 alcohols in the product. Okay, but one can selectively cleave 1, 2 diol with sodium pyruvate can cleave this 1, 2 diol. Okay. And this structure also one can redraw this way. Okay. Just this is for the sake of cyclization. Okay. Once you cleave this, this aldehyde has to cyclize with this amide. Okay. So, you rotate, rotate this bond. Okay. You rotate this bond. Okay. Now, this diol upon cleavage with sodium pyruvate, you get this aldehyde and that aldehyde immediately you can see it forms an aminol. Okay. Immediately it forms an aminol with this particular aldehyde. Okay. And this on treatment under the same condition, okay, it undergoes cyclization. Okay. It undergoes cyclization to get this product. Here, during sodium pyruvate reaction, so many reactions are happening. One, it forms the dialdehyde, then this amide amine uh, adds to this aldehyde to form this aminol. Then you can see the indole moiety coming and attacking here. Okay. That leads to the formation of the third ring, C ring. Okay. But the problem is the stereochemistry at this ring junction. Okay. Here the hydrogen in Johembine should be alpha, but what he got is beta. Meanwhile, you can also see this hydroxyl group attacks this aldehyde to form a 5 membered lactal. Okay. In one step, as I said, many reactions are taking place. Now, this lactal you treat with uh, paratoluene sulfonic acid and methanol. So, it forms the corresponding lactal methyl ether, lactal methyl ether. The lactal methyl ether, if you reduce with LAH, the LAH is known to reduce the lactam. Okay. LAH can reduce the lactam to corresponding tertiary amine. So, you got the tertiary amine. Now, you do the demethylation by treating with aqueous HCl to get the corresponding lactal, then acetylate you get the corresponding acetate. Okay. So, basically one why they have to do more steps because if you have a lactal, okay, if you have a lactal, LAH will reduce the lactal also. Okay. That is why the lactal should be protected, okay. then your lactam should be reduced. Now, the acetate you treat with uh, or you carry out a pyrolysis that means you heat it at very high temperature and this can undergo elimination as you know acetates when you heat at very high temperature it can undergo cis elimination to introduce the double bond. Okay. The pyrolysis gives the double bond. Now again you can cleave this double bond. This is a enol ether. So, if you do if you treat with osmium tetroxide, again you get the diol and the diol, if you treat with sodium pyruvate, it gives one side aldehyde and other side OCHO. 
okay. What you need here you need OH isn't it and here you need ester okay. So, this can be easily done by treating with chromium trioxide methanol. So, chromium trioxide methanol what happens? It oxidizes the aldehyde to corresponding carboxylic acid and since you are using methanol that gets esterified and also during the process this OCHO also gets hydrolyzed to get OH. So, now if you look at this structure it has almost everything in place except this stereo center okay, this stereo center should be opposite. So, that is one thing second if you want optically pure Johembi okay, then you have to resolve. Okay. So, the resolution was done by treating with camphor sulfonic acid. So, with camphor sulfonic acid first we got pseudo yohembine. why it is called pseudo yohembine? as I said the stereo center is opposite at this carbon ok. And it is known in the literature earlier when they did isolation of yohembine. this stereo center can be inverted by treating with mercuric acetate ok. So, when you treat with mercuric acetate it forms this imenium ion ok. When you treat this with mercuric acetate it forms this imenium acetate. That imenium acetate if you reduce it now then the hydrogen comes from alpha ok. So, that is what he, he did. So, the from pseudo yohembine first you treat with mercuric acetate to get this imenium ion and which is in situ reduced with platinum and methanol to get the corresponding isomerization at this carbon to get the natural product yohembine ok. So, that is how Vantamilin completed the total synthesis of uh, yohembine and the key steps as I discussed was a diel sol reaction followed by one pot cleavage of diol to dialdehyde and then cyclization on the, the top portion to get ABC ring and the southern hemisphere to form the lactol. There are two key reaction one is diel sol reaction other one is sodium perovidate cleavage to form two rings ok. The synthesis involved uh, 20 longest linear steps and overall yield of 0.024 percent from diel sol reaction attack. Okay. Now, uh, we will move to the second synthesis here the synthesis is asymmetric one earlier one which you if when we when we talked about uh, total synthesis of vantamylin it was racemic synthesis, but they resolved they resolved at pseudo yohembine stage and then converted into the naturally occurring yohembine. Here what we will do we will discuss about the MOMOS total synthesis of yohembine it is an asymmetric synthesis and he used uh, an intramolecular Michael reaction an intramolecular Michael reaction as the key reaction to form the D ring and that is where he introduced the chirality ok. So, let us see how he synthesized. Yohimbane was known to uh, be made from this 2, 3 seco yohimbine. That means this has been already converted into yohimbine by 2, 3 groups Gilbert Stock and others they have completed 2, 3 seco yohimbine to yohimbine. So, his idea was to make the 2, 3 seco yohimbine. If he could do that, that completes the formal asymmetric synthesis of yohimbine. Okay. So, his idea is basically to make this bicyclic compound okay, in optically active form. So, for that he proposed this can be made from this bicyclic enone okay, this bicyclic enone and this bicyclic enone can be made from this keto ester okay, by intramolecular cyclization and this keto ester if you look at this carefully he wants to use an asymmetric Michael reaction that means you generate an anion here and add to this alpha beta and saturated ester asymmetric Michael reaction that is the key step ok. Let us see how Momos completed 
the asymmetric total synthesis of Yohembein. He started with uh, protected benzylamine, okay, trifluoroacetyl benzylamine, then treated with sodium hydride and coached with this bromide. So, this bromide can be obtained in one step from acrolein. So, this is acrolein, okay. in one step one can make this bromide, okay. it is a protected compound. So, basically you, you remove this hydrogen and quench with this bromide. So, you get the corresponding alkyl N alkylated compound. Okay. Now, you can deprotect or remove the acetal using oxalic acid to generate the aldehyde. Once you have the aldehyde, then you do a stabilized Wittig reaction to get the corresponding trans alpha beta and saturated ester. So, you have introduced the Michael acceptor now. Okay, you can see that Michael acceptor has been introduced. Now, what we need is you have to introduce the Michael donor. So, for that you hydrolyze the trifluoroacetyl group with potassium carbonate ethanol, you get the secondary amine. Now, you do a Michael addition, another Michael addition. Okay, this Michael addition with methyl vinyl ketone, you get the corresponding methyl ketone. So, now the stage is set for the key intramolecular asymmetric Michael reaction. So, now let us see which chiral reagent he has used for the key intramolecular Michael reaction. So, he took this compound and then treated with alpha phenyl ethyl amine, alpha phenyl ethyl amine. So, that is the chiral amine. So, alpha phenyl ethyl amine is if you see this is this is the one. Okay. So, he took one isomer that is the plus isomer of alpha phenyl, phenyl ethyl amine and then made the corresponding enamine. Okay. He took alpha phenyl methyl amine and then treated with this ketone. So, you have a ketone and then treat with primary amine, it can form imine, that imine can undergo you know isomerization to form enamine. So, so this is the enamine. Now, this enamine can undergo an intramolecular Michael reaction. Okay. So, you can see this can be redrawn in this conformation. So, I will leave it for 30 seconds so that you can see how this can be redrawn like this. Okay. So, once you know how to redraw this and it is pretty easy how the chirality is transferred, chirality that is this it is like a chiral auxiliary. Okay. Alpha phenyl ethyl amine is a chiral auxiliary that is used successfully for the asymmetric Michael reaction. Okay. So, that is how the two chiral centers, okay, you can see the two chiral centers are fixed using this asymmetric Michael reaction. Okay. Next, you do not want the benzyl group because you you, you have to remove the benzyl group so that the NH can be attached to the indole. Okay. So, hydrogenolysis will remove the benzyl group to get the piperidine ring, substituted piperidine ring. Now, you protect the piperidine, piperidine with Bach anhydride to get corresponding N Bach. Then, you try to cyclize these two. So, you need the 6 chromatic ring. Okay. So, Claisen reaction you do this on this keto ester to form the corresponding 1 3 diketo, corresponding 1 3 diketo. Once you have this 1 3 diketone, now if you treat with para tolibin sulfonic acid and methanol, it can form enol ether. This we have already discussed. When you have 1 3 diketone and treat with para tolibin sulfonic acid, and alcohol, a methanol, ethanol, isopropanol, butanol. So, it will form the corresponding enol ether. Okay. Since this is unsymmetrical, you can get both isomers. However, what he found out was keeping this reaction for long time, keeping this reaction for long time converts isomer A to B. 
So basically if you run this for long time initially you get a mixture of A and B but if you keep it for long time the A is converted into B which is what he wants. So he took the enol ether now you can reduce the ketone ok you reduce the ketone with dibol to get the corresponding allylic alcohol ok. Now if you treat with acid ok paratolivine sulfonic acid. So protonation will take place here ok then this lone pair will push the double bond and in the process you will get corresponding enone ok. That enone now you have acidic proton here ok you have acidic proton here so that can be removed using LDA and quench with Manders reagent. Manders reagent is cyanomethyl formates ok. So, you can easily introduce a COTME group at alpha position ok. Then you reduce the double bond with under standard hydrogenolysis condition. So, you get the corresponding bicyclic combo ok. Now, what you need? You need to selectively reduce the ketone to alcohol. Then you have to remove the Bach group. So, before removing the Bach group you have to protect the hydroxyl group you protect the hydroxyl group as TBS and and while protecting the alcohol as TBS group the Bach also got removed then you alkylate the piperidine with this indole ethyl bromide ok indole ethyl bromide and now you can see you have the complete structure of Johembein except that this bond is not formed ok except that this bond is not formed ok. But as I said 2, 3 seco yohembine has been already converted into yohembine ok. There are at least couple of reports where 2, 3 seco yohembine has been converted into yohembine. So, if we can remove the TBS group ok. So, that will give you 2, 3 seco yohembine. So, from here the known steps are treatment with mercuric acetate in the presence of 5 percent acetic acid and followed by sodium borohydride reduction. So, basically as you know it forms an imenium ion ok then the cyclization takes place again followed by imenium ion and then reduction with sodium borohydride the hydride is delivered from the alpha side to get yohimbine. Okay. So, that is how he could accomplish the asymmetric formal total synthesis of yohimbine. Okay. The key reaction in the asymmetric total synthesis of MOMOS is the asymmetric intramolecular Michael reaction. So, if you look at the structure of yohimbine only the D ring has two chiral centers ok. So, the chiral centers were introduced by asymmetric Michael intramolecular Michael reaction. Overall the synthesis was done in 13 longest linear steps and with impressive overall yield that is 25.6 percent yield. If you compare this yield with 1 tamilanes this is significantly high I would say it is 100 times uh, higher than what uh, 1 tamilane has reported. Okay. Both are interesting synthesis and both add its unique key reactions to synthesize your okay. So, thank you.